Welcome to Yaden Community News, your independent source for Yaden Community News. So, welcome to the Yaden Borough Council. This photograph is council chambers with council in session and their officers. We'll go around the table from left forward around. First, we have Councillor Isaac Dotson. Then we have Councillor Florence Penny McDonald, followed by Councillor Jacqueline Purefoy Brinkley. Then the next person, I believe, is Donna Turner, the administrative assistant. I could be very wrong on that. But after that, we have the vice president of the council, John Byrne. In the center, we have Mayor Jacqueline Mosley. Next to her, seated, is Dr. Vivian Ford, president of the council. Next to her is Paul Jansen, the interim borough manager, followed by Robert Scott, the solicitor. Then Councillor Dolores Jones-Butler, followed by the final councillor, David Adams, who was seated earlier in the day by a vacancy board whose legitimacy is being called into question. So the vacancy board was questioned because Elaine Carter, who was the member of the vacancy board who was appointed in 2006 but had not been reappointed since, although there was a, con a contention by Rosalind Johnson, former councilwoman, who said that Dr. Ford did actually reappoint her in 2008 but didn't have a vote on it and therefore it was illegal. So how that muddies the waters, I don't know. But Solicitor Scott said that since she was re she was appointed in 2006 and never um, was replaced that the state law pretty much holds that she would still remain in her seat at that position. Three council members walked out of the vacancy board to the cheers of members of the audience. Then they held their vote which was the three council members who were remaining and the chair Elaine Carter when they appointed David Adams. So Joan Butler said that she was going to file an injunction and Robert Scott said that that was a good idea. Let's let the courts decide it and we'll go from there. This stems from the fact that Elaine Carter is Florence Penny McDonald's mother. So there is a claim that there could be conflict of interest. And so the story continues because on July 16th there was a council meeting and Florence Penny McDonald, John Byrne, and Dr. Vivian Ford did not show up for that meeting. So apparently there's two factions of this Democratic Party here in Yaden, and they don't have enough votes on either side to really fulfill their own agenda. So you've got a tit for tat, a this for that, he said, she said thing going on. Um, there are some facts we can tell you about the Democratic County party chair Cliff Wilson who said that he wouldn't recognize an attempt by a number of council and committee persons to appoint Vivian Ford as a Democratic candidate in November for the special election to fill Terry McGrath's seat, nor will he recognize attempts for them to replace Dolores Jones Butler with Jack Byrne as chair of the Yaden Democratic Party. Apparently there was a meeting held by Jones Butler to, in her words to discuss the get out the vote efforts and that meeting was held at her house but then she states that um, Penny McDonald came in and took over the meeting that she brought a majority with her which included Jack Byrne, Tony Tolliver, Tony Smiley and Elaine Carter and that they went ahead and voted her out, voted Vivian forward to the seat and did all these things and um, Jones Butler said that McDonald just wanted to take her down because she had the audacity to complain about $500 in borough funds that they used to purchase tickets to the Senator Anthony Williams birthday fundraiser. But McDonald said that Jones was just not building up the party and that she was taking part in divisive activities. But Cliff Wilson said he considered the whole meeting null and void. It's really outrageous what they did. You just can't go and seize control of a meeting because you have a majority. Aside from being personally rude, it was politically stupid, violating the rules, unquote. Party rules do require a majority of committee people to sign a petition calling for a meeting to remove a chair. Wilson would have to attend such a meeting and vote would be taken. 
If the effort succeeded, the vice chair would become the acting chair and have 60 days to call another member. So there's a whole process that's supposed to take place that be supplanted by that action, and it was declared null and void. Then there's the whole fresh start thing. Um, that's a program that pays the receipts of expenses for that program through the recreational department. Um, there are some questions as to whether that is funding that group or not. So the additional problem there is that the group is run by Terry McGriff's wife, which just opens up the door to all kinds of questions as to whether or not there are conflict of interests there. I'm not saying there are, I'm just saying that it opens the door to that subject. It seems as though that's one of the portions that's really at the heart of what's going on here is that there's just this question of conflict of interest. Who has a conflict of interest? And it seems to me that there is a plethora of conflict of interests on this council and in the people that it deals with in the organizations that it funds and or pays receipts for whatever the case may be. The problem is that there is a question and we really need to have some transparency, some clear, independent transparency on these matters, and that in itself will shut the door. But having all of these possible conflict of interest is just a big flag waving in the air saying, look at me, look at me, look at me. And the more that happens, then the more controversy that comes. And if something's happening that is illegitimate and illegal, then it deserves to be exposed. If something is happening that is fully legal, fully legitimate, and absolutely helpful to the community, it deserves to be applauded, light shown on it, and led as an example of how to do things right. But which is it? So the latest news is that on August 24th, we had Isaac Dotson Jacqueline Purefoy Brinkley and Dolores Jones Butler with Mayor Jacqueline Mosley filing a complaint in Delaware County Court of Common Pleas to request a preliminary injunction to remove Councillor Adams from office and declare his appointment. Any votes he cast on council is null and void. They're also asking that they declare the vacancy board as open and that then would eliminate Elaine Carter as have been a legitimate chairperson of the vacancy board. So we'll see what happens. They named the defendants as President Vivian Ford, Vice President Jack Byrne, and Florence Penny McDonald. So the solicitor still maintains that, you know, she was elected in, or excuse me, appointed in 2006. Nobody was appointed in her place, even though she wasn't reappointed, that the law still holds she is the person who is legitimately in that office. So we'll see what happens in the court with this uh, complaint. Uh, for the record, Adams did say that he'd abide by whatever decision the court makes. Of course, the borough has 20 days to respond to that, so I don't know if they responded yet or not, but we'll see what happens and what comes to pass. Anyway, there is an election in November. And October 5th is the deadline for registration. So we may be waiting until that day to find out who will be on the ballot for that open council seat. From what I understand, Jones Butler wanted to nominate Sandra Thomas. Now, I'm not sure who that is, but that is from a claim that Penny McDonald had made, and that's all a result of that you know, null and void meeting that was held at Joan Butler House. So whether or not it's Sandra Thomas or David Adams or somebody else, I'm not sure, but we'll have to wait and see. There's always the right in vote. Don't forget that. For Yaden Community News, this is David Lee. Yaden Community News, your independent source for news and information.